Hey, it's me. So last time we chatted, we talked about how well, how tough this path can be and warned against thinking that just like a few meditations or some miracle formula will make all our problems disappear. At the same time, I wanted to point out it's also not true that this journey is too hard to handle. So if you're a bit scared at all about this, challenge that fear. Ask yourself, is this fear justified? Sometimes our fear is just an excuse for that part of us, the lower self, that wants to avoid change and growth. So let's tackle these fears head on. Yes, this path is challenging, but remember God is wise and fair. He's not going to give you more than you can handle. It does vary for each person. The more you grow, the stronger you become. And so you might be expected to take on more. But if you're still building up strength, even a small effort is enough right now. The thing is, none of us can truly find happiness unless we do our best spiritually. This path and the guidance that is offered to us is here to help. So if you're feeling like this path might be too much, try putting yourself in God's hands and ask him about it. Let him guide you. I mean, be honest with yourself. How often do you actually do that when you're feeling doubtful? Usually, I know I do this. We make our decisions and think the path is too hard without even asking God what he thinks. Another misunderstanding is thinking that following this path means you'll have to neglect other parts of your life. Or it's going to take too much time. And that's simply not true. You might worry that spending time on your spiritual growth will take away from your work or your ability to enjoy life. Actually, the opposite happens. This path isn't just another activity that you add to your schedule or your life that takes away time and energy from other things. Think of it more like the foundation, the ground you walk on. When you decide to follow it, you shift your life into a different direction. Over time, even if your main problems don't vanish overnight, you'll feel a new spark inside you. And this will give you strength, energy, and the ability to enjoy life more than you ever have before. You'll do better at work, you'll enjoy your free time more, and find more joy in whatever you do. On this journey, you'll eventually discover where, deep down, you've gone against spiritual laws. Maybe in your feelings your reactions or thoughts, even if not in your direct actions. Understanding this will help you gradually change those inner patterns, freeing up strength and life force that was blocked before. I'm not promising you a miracle or reward from heaven, but hopefully I am showing you that this path works because it's based on the natural law of cause and effect. So don't think of this decision as just taking on an extra activity like a new class that takes time away from other things. Instead, see this path as the foundation of your life, meant to make it whole and connected. If you can solve your inner problems and errors, which you can only do on this path, your outer problems will eventually be solved too. Because We've often carried wrong habits of thinking and feeling from one life to the next. It's like these knots have become tighter and more tangled. So it takes time to untie them, to understand how your inner world works in relation to spiritual laws and truth. If you can do this, though, your outer problems will start to fade. This won't happen if you just focus on the outer problem without finding the inner issue that's always the cause. Always the cause. You'll also get so much more out of the good things in life, happiness, joy, pleasure, if your soul becomes healthy again and your inner reactions align with spiritual laws. Only then will you be truly capable of happiness. I mean, how many people are actually capable of happiness, true happiness? I would say very few. Most people are as afraid of happiness as they are of unhappiness. Yeah, you desire great happiness, but the further out of reach it seems, the more you want it. Yet when there's a chance to actually achieve it, you might shy away. 
Think back in your life and you'll see this to be true. I know it is in my life. This is a sign that the soul is hurting and has strayed from spiritual laws. So everything you do in life will have more flavor, more awareness, and more life if you follow the path of self-knowledge and growth and do what God wants you to do. It won't take more time than make sense for your life. Practically, like practically, this could look like about half an hour a day on your spiritual development with a little willpower and organization. I mean, you spend time on your physical body, feeding it, resting it, cleaning it. And you don't feel like that takes away from your other duties or fun activities, right? You see it as necessary. Yet when it comes to doing the same for your soul and it takes less time, you have doubts and fears. I mean, if you think about it, these doubts shouldn't hold you back. Often your lower self brings up these doubts. As long as you don't recognize how the lower self works and hides behind excuses, you won't be able to master it no matter how sincere your love for God might be. Loving God is wonderful when it shows in beautiful prayer and meditation. And two, the work needs to be done. Now what's the work? I propose it's mastering your lower self. Doing good for others, for example, is part of it. But can you truly help others if your own inner issues make you think things that aren't true? Probably not. You might do a good deed and think that's enough, but it's not truly good if it's not supported by pure feelings. Purifying your feelings is your goal on this path, and it doesn't require more time each day than other things in your life. Yeah, maybe some willpower, some common sense thinking. Maybe you have made this wholehearted decision, or maybe you haven't. Either way, it's important to understand how to deal with the lower self that works in your subconscious and sends out excuses. Even those who sincerely want to walk this path will have many fights with their lower self along the way. So it's important to train yourself to understand what's underneath your doubts and fears that try to pull you away from the path, or at least make it harder for you to understand yourself. Okay, so this is one thing we need to deal with first and keep in mind. To learn to see through our doubts and hesitations, learn to see the real meaning behind any stubbornness when you don't want to understand something. And the more you come to know your whole self, what you really are and who you are, the easier it will be to overcome whatever in your lower self is pulling you away from this inner work. Now maybe you're thinking, well, isn't it enough if I'm a decent person? God loves us all, right? And if I try to be good and behave right, that should be enough. Why do I have to go through all of this? Well, yeah, it could be enough for some people. But don't forget that for anyone guided to hear this, if you're hearing this right now, there is an obligation involved. More is expected of you than just being what is commonly considered a decent person who doesn't harm others. Overcoming your lower self frees you from your own chains and that's for your own good. Okay, but let's stay with the idea that being good should be enough. What does harm to others really mean? It's not just stealing, gossiping, or hurting someone physically. You might harm another person by not having enough love. And no forced kindness can change the fact that this love is still missing in your soul. You might harm others by not having enough understanding or by being blind to yourself and therefore to others. Each fault of yours stands in the way of unfolding pure love, insight, and understanding. And in this way, you do harm to others. It's not as simple as it seems. Imagine the love of God, this amazing light that lives in the soul of each person. The lower self stands between you and this light and the good it could do for those around you. You cause harm not only through bad deeds, thoughts, and impure feelings, but also by lacking the love and understanding you could have if you reached your potential in this life by following the path. 
not only traits commonly called faults hinder you and harm others, but also your fears, which aren't usually considered faults. You might not realize that your fears cause great harm, not only in your own life, but also in the lives of others. Your fears hide your light of love, understanding, and truth. So being on this path isn't just about overcoming character weaknesses. Overcoming your fears is just as important because as long as there's fear in your heart, you harm others. You actually send out certain frequencies that have a negative effect. And your spirit, your subconscious mind, senses the fear of others all the time and is affected by it. You can only protect yourself against the fear coming from others and your own negative reactions if you get rid of your own fear. Then you'll consciously understand the fear of others and it won't harm you anymore. But as long as you live instinctively and unknowingly, you're deeply affected by fears, yours and others. And that just sets up a vicious cycle. They can only be broken if you gain enough self-awareness and understanding. So I say don't think it's enough to just be a decent person. That term varies greatly depending on a person's spiritual growth and what they're capable of. God sees each of us differently. Also don't think that you don't harm anyone just by avoiding obvious wrong deeds. As long as there's fear in your heart, you harm others in subtle but damaging ways. Now reflect on everything we've talked about. If you really want to follow this path, it's not enough to just listen to this once. Some of the sentences have deep meaning for you personally. It's important that you work with them, sit with them. Now, I promised to show you how to actually start on this path. There's many ways and each person reacts differently. And of course, in this mode of communication, I can't give you any individual guidance. Please connect with me personally if you are seeking individual guidance. What I can do is give you some basic steps to help you make your own plan. And you don't have to follow this exactly. Some details can vary as long as you kind of keep the essence in mind. You know that gaining self-knowledge is extremely important. So how can this be done? The first step I propose is to think as objectively as you can about yourself, all your good qualities and all of your faults. Write them down. Write them down because writing helps you focus and keeps you from forgetting what you've learned. Seeing the words on paper can shed new light and help you be a bit more detached when considering yourself as well. After you've done that thoroughly, the next step is to ask someone who knows you well to tell you honestly what they think about you. Now, I know it takes courage to do that. Think of this as your first effort to overcome it. By doing this, you'll achieve a small victory that will already free you from one inner chain. Consider getting together with one or two others who are interested in the same goal. I mean, that's the whole purpose of our connection calls. Okay, so you're welcome to join us for those. Or if you have a network or community already, you know, access that. There's no reason, no reason to be alone in your spiritual quest. So do not use that as an excuse. If you're not sure which network or community is right for you, pray for guidance. And you'll see what happens. If you need help, ask sincerely, you'll get an answer. But it is important to not do this work completely alone. So first, you align yourself with a spiritual law. Opening your heart to another person brings spiritual help that you couldn't receive by yourself. It's part of the law of brotherhood. People who always work alone, no matter how hard they try, can get stuck in kind of a bubble that blocks complete understanding and evaluation of themselves, an understanding that flows naturally when you open up to another soul. And I get it, not isolating yourself requires humility, and that doesn't come easily at first. But after some time, it becomes second nature through working with another person. Soon you'll be able to talk openly about your difficulties, weaknesses, and problems and receive feedback. And that is healthy for the soul. 
Anyone who has tried opening up will confirm that just discussing a problem you've kept to yourself, even without getting advice, can suddenly make it seem less overwhelming. Being yourself, as you really are, authentic self, with at least one person, with as few masks and defenses as possible, is really, really good for you. At the same time, you offer an act of love to the other person, whom you help more by showing your own human weaknesses than by trying to appear perfect. Your partner or co-worker will do the same for you. So you have me, you have the community I am offering you, and of course, there may already be people in your life, in your community, that you can connect with. The point is to organize this connection. Seek out this connection. You'll see how helpful and rewarding it will be. It will give you things to think about. You'll ask each other and learn a lot about friendship, humility, and understanding. I mean, asking others about your faults may not always be possible with the person you've chosen as your spiritual partner, especially if you just started working together. And that's where friends and family may come in. Your own friends and family may not share your interest in this work, and that's okay, but they still know you well, and they can tell you more about yourself than your new friends. So I advise you to ask those who know you really well, no matter what they believe, Likely they'll respect you for your sincere effort to improve, to learn about your faults, and for listening to them. By doing just that, you might open a door to the very people you hope to reach but couldn't just by talking at them or trying to prove a truth they couldn't see. When your friends or family tell you your faults, think about them calmly. Someone might say something that seems unfair or hurtful at first. You might even be more hurt if a truth is told to you. Even if you're convinced that the crit criticism is unfair, try to think about it anyway. There may be a bit of truth in it. The other person might see you differently or only on a surface level. They may not fully understand why you react the way you do or all the complex workings of your soul. And that's okay. They might not choose the right words. But that small bit of truth might open a new door of understanding for you. It might not even be something entirely new. It's often necessary to consider the same fault or trait from new angles under a different light, so to speak, to understand the various effects it may have on those around you. When you pray and meditate each day, this is what you could bring into those practices. Okay, so maybe it's better now to spend less time on general thoughts and instead ask God for help to see yourself truthfully without the distorted view we have of ourselves. Ask God to guide you how to react rightly to new insights about yourself. Ask for help to receive unpleasant truths from others in a productive, productive way. If you start this way, you made a very good beginning. If you take all the faults, you're starting to see more clearly into your daily meditation. And if your wish is truly sincere, you've made the best start imaginable. Okay, And as you do that, train yourself to observe your inner reactions when you deal with the unpleasant parts of yourself. This is super important. You know, I began by saying that the lower self constantly resists your efforts. Here you have a great opportunity to watch your lower self as it works and reacts. So try to watch it as if you're observing someone else from that place of yourself that does the observing, sometimes called the observer. Try to be a little less involved in it. Put some distance between your self-observation and the reactions of your lower self, your ego, your hurt, your pride that can get involved when you're dealing with the unpleasant side of your personality. By recognizing your own reactions and understanding them, maybe even laughing at them a little bit, not taking yourself so seriously in this respect, you'll take another step forward. Okay? Now this awareness isn't going to happen overnight. It takes constant work and after some time of regular practice each day even just that half hour that I mentioned you will make progress you'll reach a point where you feel the distance between the real you and your hurt little ego and you can smile at it without being so caught up in it once you've done this the door will open for further self-understanding 
So I think this is kind of a great way to begin. Those of you who haven't yet found the right partner, you know, to work with, pray for guidance. You'll be helped. Then get together, maybe once a week, and share what you've accomplished so far, where you still have difficulties, what your inner reactions are, and maybe even put a plan together of next steps. Okay? So start by making your own list of faults. After you've done your best with that, have um, someone you know well tell you about yourself. Okay? Ask them about your faults and then compare their observations with your own findings. Combine the two lists and work with that. Take the results to God in your daily prayer to help you further. That's a wonderful beginning for anyone and everyone. I could tell you that effort, that action will not be in vain. I can promise you that. If every day you do some self-observation and meditate on some of the things that we're talking about here, you will make progress long before actual results show up in your life. A feeling of deep contentment and peace will come to you more often than it would have in the past, something only those who work on themselves according to God's will can experience. Now, on days when you feel strong, alive, and full of enthusiasm, yeah, it's much easier to connect with God and His truth within yourself. Think of such days as a source of strength that you can draw on during tough times. Most important, though, are the days when you feel low, discouraged, and doubtful. Then it's crucial for you to fight against giving into those moods. Choose the days, choose those days to re listen, perhaps, to what I'm saying here, to reflect on it again, and take your problem to God. It's hard to have the right thoughts at the right moment. But practicing this is part of the journey. Forming the habit of having the right thoughts when you need them is key. So if you're feeling down, don't give in to your mood so easily. Ask God for understanding and late in that moment. Then if you still doubt, ask God for his truth and his will for you. Ask Christ to help you to be open to it. You know, Father, is this your truth? Is this your will for me? I'm open to receive your answer. Nothing more is asked when you're in doubt. That's all you have to do. And if you do this sincerely with all your heart and ignore the resistance of your lower self that always lurks in the background, then you'll have made a big step forward. I want you to remember this. Take it with you today as the first real and concrete beginning on this path. Everything you struggle with in life results directly or indirectly from your shortcomings and fears. If you didn't have any shortcomings, there wouldn't be any fear in you. It's fear that makes you miserable. The same fear that blinds you to the joys of life. And remember too, that it's in your power to break the chains of fear by following this path. It's in your hands. If you wish for this power, you'll receive it. No matter how busy you are, you'll have the time not only to do your duties as you have before, but to do them even better. And you'll have time to enjoy life so much more when you lose the constant fear and insecurity in your soul. Fear spoils so much for you. Don't think you lack the strength for the necessary work on this path. This strength is in you. It will be given to you bit by bit for all your needs, spiritual and material, when you decide to choose this path and trust God to give you what you need. Thanks for listening. I love you. Let's connect soon.